Hey guys, Frank here, your Virtual General Aviation Aviator, and I am in the So May Sim SMS version of the Beaver, and I'm at the runway ready to take off because um, I really want to do a quick and short flight. I want to do the same flight with this, with the SMS Beaver, and then do the exact uh, similar flight with the um, the Thronda Beaver. Uh, so I decided to start with the SMS Beaver, and let's jump into the cockpit. It's cold, so we'll get it started. Uh, I'm not going to let it really warm up, and we'll, we'll take off. Okay, so let's get our fuel on. Okay, and our master needs to come on. All right, let's get our beacon light on. And let's wobble up some pressure on that fuel line. Uh, this is the fuel line gauge right here. And I hope you can see the cursor. All right. And so let's, and you'll see it go up as I wobble it up. <laughs> I'm using wobble as a as a verb. All right. And so I am pumping my heart out. Pumping the beaver. All right, guys, you know better. Get your mind out the gutter. All right. And so I got, should have enough fuel. Now, Let's uh, prime it, and I prime it here with this little guy here, um, just by the seat, and maybe five or six primes is all I need. One, well, actually that's two, because I primed it before. Three, four, five, I keep letting it button letting that handle go six so I should be able to get a good start all right so let's mix the four let's feather our prop and let's barely crack the throttle with this big was radio engine we don't need it to to rev up uh, that uh severely shorten the life of the engine if not do some damage okay so let's Turn our max on, fuel pump on, and let's check our voltage. Okay, we got um, we got about 24 volts. Okay, and prop clear. All right, we got a good start. So we'll leave that fuel pump on and uh, and go ahead and turn on our our alternator and radios. Alternator comes on and radios come on. Okay, um, I really don't need to get the weather, but gonna get it anyway one two three zero zero uh, one two three eight I should have went backwards but and let's turn this guy on and we should get eight us the radio heels on one two three eight check out volume let me check the volume in the cell. Um, don't think it's that. It's not that. Okay, so I am not sure why I am not getting. Let's just toggle the radio off and toggle it back on. I'm not sure why I'm not getting. Check my fuses, and as you can see the fuses are modeled. Uh, let's 
starting let's see which one of these are the comms this is the com here com slash nav and I'm an unfeathered prop I'm not going to worry about the Adels since I can't get it but as I said I am going to fly to Lake Ridge uh, which is 14 nautical miles and and then I'm then I'm gonna make the same flight in the other beaver. Okay, so let's go ahead and set the flaps to take off. Actually, I'm not gonna put them all the way to take off because with a runway just under two miles, I don't need a bunch of flaps. Okay, so let's uh, take the brake off. Uh, temperatures are not quite at operate, but that's okay. We don't take off anyway. All right. Get our manifold pressure up around 33 and a half. Go. Bring it down a little bit. As 
I said, this is a, only a 14 nautical mile journey. Uh, I should have I should, I turned that fuel pump booster off now. Yeah, with 
so I'm a little high, but let's see if I can get this guy in without ground with it. When it comes to tail of the dragon, some days I feel like the ground loop king. So welcome to the Thronda version of the Beaver. And this one is a default livery. I have literally not done a thing to it. Um, so look at that chrome. That's, that's just amazing. Even the wingtip tank writing um, 80, 87 octane. 18 empirical gallons, 21 U.S. gallons. Wow, you can read that. So this is really an incredible looking aircraft. Um, and I can imagine all the reflections that it would cast if it was not painted, which I'm not going to put any paint on it. Um, this is what the aircraft looks like when you first load it up and I and I know because I, I just did a reinstall reinstallation for the Thrunder Beaver for some reason the original one stopped working um, every time I load it I would do I would have a crash to desktop um, that's one of the risks that I suspect you take when your aircraft is 
it was modeled so um, extensively, so completely uh, complex modeling. Um, and when I say that, I mean there are all kinds of things that you can do to this aircraft. Let me turn the vo adjust the volumes. Um, like you can change the panel out and can change the livery out. And of course, you can, <coughs> excuse me, you got working wing tanks and et cetera. So this aircraft is quite impressive, um, in my opinion. Okay, so we're not going to do anything special to it. Uh, we're going to fly it basically right out of the box and just make sure that I don't have any elements on. And I'm going to put just weight in for the pallet. And that's it. So let's get rid of that and let's get it started. Um, you can see the texturing and the modeling is just superb. I mean, come on, guys, look at that. You can, if if I didn't know better, I think I would think I can just reach out and touch that. <laughs> but um, but let's just make sure all of those are working, and I can go back to using my yoke for this the flip button zone. So let's start out with the beacon check, and let's. Go ahead on and turn the fuel on. And I actually do need to go over here and put some gas in the center. I think by default, um, I usually don't get gas in that middle tank. And when I don't get gas in that middle tank, what happens, let's see, there you go. What happens is when I, when I'm flying and I flip from my left to the rear tank, and it hit that middle tank, then the engine dies. Uh, uh, or maybe that's on the. Uh, anyway, I think that holds true for both aircrafts. Now that I think about it, okay. So let's uh, go ahead and get the fuel on, and let's go ahead and pump pressurize that fuel line. Now. And I can get rid of the yoke. Okay, so this guy here is what I'm going to pump up. And I just need to get it in the green. And I don't want to overpressurize it. All right. And let's go ahead and, and prime it. And I hope you can hear this. That's one, two, we do it five times, three, four, five. And let's make sure we drop this back down and it get turned to the off so it don't cause any problems all right and another thing that's really cool about this aircraft is it has this uh, animation and I am going to turn it on so that you can see it when it cranks when it starts up okay so now I am going to leave my mixture off and just let it crank for a minute before I actually um, add, before I actually add f uh, fuel, all right, and let's get our master on, okay, and let's pop that open, and look at everything, oh man, that's Wobble this back up a little bit. Okay. And. Let's 
see that see this animation it shows you those those cylinders firing off all right so that's that's enough priming and again I don't know what that do but I've seen them do it in real life when they crank the beavers all right Very good. Now what I don't want to do is rev the engine. And as you can see, I got my Tundra tires on it with the mud flaps. Um, I can opt for just regular tires, but I do prefer the Tundra tires. Um, Let's see, let you guys see the difference. And I can do that in both versions. Um, I got that option in both versions, incidentally. Uh, the SMS version as well as this version. Okay, so my trim um, wheel is up here. And if you ever watch them fly these guys in real life, you'll see them reach up there and trim it out. Alright, let's get the um, the altimeter set. Now, for some reason, I couldn't get the radio to come on. Uh, that remind me, I need to turn my alternator on. And I need to turn my avionics on. Now, the as you can imagine, the Beaver this panel has been changed and worked and worked. So whoever installed the the avionics moved the master from here, from wherever it was, to up here on the dash. Raleigh Durham INTL information X-ray. 1600 Zulu weather. Wind 0, 060 0 at 5. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 25,000 view. Temperature 3. Dew point minus two. Altimeter three zero five zero. Three zero five. Arriving runways zero five left. Zero five right. Departing runways zero five left. Zero five right. Advise on initial contact. You have X-ray. Okay. So <clears throat> three zero four zero. I think you think that's what he said. Um, X-ray, and I think we are just about ready. I didn't turn my beacon light. Yeah, I did turn my beacon light on. Okay, so go ahead and turn my landing lights on, and and we are just about ready. I'm not going to let the cylinder temp come up to where it should. Um, in real life, I would need to just let this guy sit here and run until the cylinder head temp come up to at least one um, or 100 degrees. Right now, it's at about 55 degrees. Um, and my, I am in operating temperature range. And the reason my Hobbs doesn't have anything on it, like I said, I just had to reinstall this aircraft. Otherwise, let's get, the, get it unfeathered. Otherwise, I would have had probably 15, 20 hours on this aircraft already. So it's been getting a lot of use. And I did back up the old stuff so I may be able to to copy some of the elements that some of the databases that have my old information in it. And anyway, I digress. Alright, so what you're interested in is the flight, not all this yippity yappity I'm doing. 
Okay. So, uh, we turn this guy on to. Ah, that's the. Uh, I don't need this. That was I'm trying to turn on this guy. All right. Okay, head and bug matches up. We have five left. Wins zero six zero at five, I think. So, so yeah, we good. All right, let's get the break off. light come on hmm. interestingly enough when I first gave it a little gas my manifold pressure went down um, okay so let's let's make this happen 33.5 on the manifold is what I want to take off.
precious, feel precious when you feel. And for this flight, feel a mountain is not an issue. Again, on just as on the SMS version, all of the fuses are modern, which means they work. And on top of that, depending on how you want your fuses, you can actually move bank by bank. And when I say bank by bank, um, there's a bank of, there are, I think, 24 fuses and you can move you can move this bank of six fuses to some location and that bank of six fuses to another location um, and if you wanted to customize your, your panel. Okay, so where am I? Uh, 
time I get there, I should be there to, to get eyeballs on the lake, on the bridges. At least that's the plan. So that was a landing not to be proud of, but we we made it down safely and hopefully uh, we didn't break the aircraft. And let's just get it off the runway and shut it down.
park it in the same place that we parked the S SMS aircraft. sure that I did a replay on the SMS but I am going to shut down let's see switch is slim um, leave the navs on um, avionics can go off master I mean uh, alternator Master and Max. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that landing, if you don't mind. Stop without a tail, without a loop. That's what I. That was what I was um, interested to see. So anyway, guys, there you go. Um, which one, the the flight model at the, for the for the SMS put me more puts me more in mind with the with flying some of the um how should i say the the microsoft flight simulator um it it's, feels to be more um feels more fluid uh when you're up in the air or uh, and the thronda version feels i guess you can call it more stable or some people like to say it feels more like it's on rails, but uh, as we all know, um, X planes blade blade elemental theory, I think that's what it's called, uh, does a great job at at giving at helping with realistic flight dynamics uh, no, no matter what we're flying anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the watching the differences and the, and noted the similarities between between these two aircraft and as always guys saw renato y'all come back now you hear